Hi, okay, so this is a short little video with a lot of information in. Um, I'll try and move through it quite quickly, but you can watch again and see how you find it. And we're going to talk about the perception of 3D objects. Now, perception is how you see things, um, how you perceive them to look. Um, and when you're drawing, you're creating that perception for somebody else to understand and read. Um, so you are trying to draw in a way that looks exactly like the 3D objects you can see in front of you. And we're all really used to seeing a real 3D object, like this great big eight ball here. It's mostly spherical, it's got a little flat bit. Um, but you're also used to seeing pictures. And in your mind, you know that they mean the same thing. But when you're drawing, you're trying to create that illusion yourself. So somebody perceives a ball is there. Now we're going to have a look at some draw, some photographs I've taken to start off with. I'm going to talk about how things look from above and from the side. For example, we're going to start with what looks like a disc, but actually, if you think about it, it's a very short cylinder. It's got a circle at the top, circle at the bottom, and it's joined by a rectangular face that goes all the way around. So it's basically like a very squashed one of those. Okay, and then the photographs I'm going to show you that when you look down from above, you can see that a cylinder, you just see that circular face and it looks exactly circular. But when I take a photo from down at its level from the side, which is hopefully where a lot of your still lights will be viewed from, it looks very different. That flat, big circle starts to look squashed. If you look now, the distance you can see from the front to the back is now much shorter. But the distance from the side to the side is the same. Okay, so we're going to have a very quick going and trying to just model for you what I mean when I'm drawing. So if I was drawing a circle, you can see I get my hand going before I even touch the paper. Circles are really hard to draw. You're going to need those tickly lines. I'm using something called a carbon pencil today, which will be really dark. You should be using a light, light touch to get started. All those sketchy lines before you choose what you're going to draw. So there we go, I've got my hand going. That's my cylinder from above. Can I see any of the edges of it? No can't actually, from this angle, tell it was a cylinder. And if you guys are drawing um, food, I think, so something like a pizza or even a burger from the top would look round. But when we're starting to look from the side, say that this is the edge of my table, and quite often things, straight lines, look like they're moving away. If you've done another perspective with us, they look like they're moving away towards a vanishing point over there, don't they? So there may be those at the edge of my table. And I know my circle side to side will still be about the same width. So it'll still be about there, won't it? But top to bottom, it's got a lot shorter. So I've marked the sides very lightly that I think are going to be the exact same width where I want the edges of my circle. And now I'm going to make the top and the bottom marks there. They're in between, exactly in the middle. Much, much shorter than my original circle. And if you want to, you can start just thinking what will happen is it looks very much more pointed at the corners there. It's not a point, it's still a very smooth line. And um horrible feeling I'm making that look easy. I think I'm showing you rather than explaining. That is what your circle would look like when viewed from the side. And then because it's a cylinder, I hope you can see that. So there's your circle. And when I turn it to the side, oh, it looks more like that. Can you see now I can see these edges and they would come down from the very, very edge point I can see. And this bottom line follows exactly the same curve as the top. Okay, so 
The way you're going to get good at this is by practicing, but also by re being really, really observant of what you can see. And the nice thing for you guys is you're going to be working from a photograph when you're drawing. And that really helps you see things as a flat image. And then when you go back and try and draw from real objects, you'll probably notice these things more. So this is my cylinder from above and this is my cylinder from the side. Now I haven't had to use any of that um, perspective, those vanishing points, because there's nothing else to compare it to. And when I came to shade it, depending on say my light was coming from this side, this side would be lighter and over here would be in shadow. So not only have you got to observe where your um, shape is getting distorted from your angle. So distorted means slightly squashed, changed. The perception of that circle is that it isn't, it's no longer a circle, is it? Even though you would know looking at it. So if I was drawing a pizza, I probably wouldn't be shading it like a hard edge cylinder like that, would I? I might be adding in some wavy dough lines where I can see it's got a little thicker and thinner. I might realise that my tomato and cheese and the inside follow a similar circle. And I can start adding my toppings, which will all also be squashed oval circles as well. You should have your photograph to work from, so maybe that will help. That's just a very quick one for a cylinder. Okay. I'm going to get through a lot of sheets of paper. I've got a big pad today. The next one I want to think about, and I've got some photographs for this. I've got two balls with me today. I've got a little one and a big one. Is is that the same with a ball? And I think you can see if I put the photographs in this video, when I look down on top of a sphere, I see a round circular outline. Perfect circle. If I turn them, it's very hard to see on the ping pong ball because there's nothing there. If I turn them, oh, it has got some writing. Does that change when I view them from a different angle? Do they still just look like circles? And the answer is yes. So my sphere, when I look down from above, looks like my perfect circle. But unlike the cylinder, when I look from the side, it doesn't get distorted. So I'm going to do a slightly bigger one here. What is interesting is to not think just about the view from the top, but how does the surface of my cylinder work? Okay, so the nice thing about a ping pong ball is I'm actually going to draw a few lines on it now. Give me a minute. Okay, so hopefully you can see I've divided it up. It looks a bit like a tiny basketball or an orange when you do it into segments. And now when I look from the top, you can see those lines. And when I look from the side, you can see my perception of those lines changes. And that is how you're going to make this circle look more spherical. So I may still, if I'm looking from slightly above, be able to see the very top of my, say you're doing an orange or a piece of fruit, but then this line curves quite gently down that. And your finished shape won't necessarily have all of these lines showing. And then it has a partner line there with the same similar quite gentle curve. I know my drawings. And at the bottom, if I can see the top, I can't see where they meet at the bottom. So down here, they disappear over the edge of my circle without even meeting. Okay, then my curves get a little wider because I've got to fill out that circle. And again, they won't quite meet at the bottom because I can't see that bottom bit. In fact, I can see over here, this one should disappear over here. I don't think I observed very well on my first one. It should disappear right over there. And on this edge, I can just see that one disappearing over the top from my angle anyway. It will be different from yours. 
those disappear over the top and I can see a tiny bit of there. And I can't see that one, I just need the edge. Now my outline hasn't changed. But because I've been looking at the way those objects curve towards me, and the lines have helped me do that, you won't be drawing lines necessarily on your fruit. Okay, and that has made my sphere. And if you think about it going the other way, if I had a line that went around this part of my shape, around the um, equator if we're doing our globes, okay, from the top you can't see that line at all. From the exact side to you it looks pretty straight, but we are looking at that sort of angle, aren't we? And can you see that it curves around? Again, almost disappearing up there and then curving through the middle and back up up there. And that's added that real 3D-ness, hasn't it? That curve in the opposite direction. And if you kept going in a very similar way, you would almost get the segments in the other way. If my ping pong ball was see-through, it would be a little bit like those ellipses we were drawing. So the back of my ball would be going like that. Okay, that's a lot of lines on there, but I would hope you could see that's starting to look more 3D. Now we're not expecting you to draw all of those lines. You could They are called construction lines, so you would do them very, very lightly. And they will help you know where will be the front and the brightest nearest the light. They help you get that shape. The final one I'm going to talk about is a um, cube or a cuboid. Obviously one has a few rectangular faces, one has all square faces, perfect rectangles. Okay, and again, from above, it looks like a perfect square when I look for it slightly from the side or below even it starts changing the cube is the easiest one to think about when we think about our vanishing lines so if I was drawing see that was the edge of my table I could see in the background of my photograph right at the back I can see the edge of my table disappearing I'm going to put a couple of little dots on it and think, well, when I look, I can see this edge of my cube first. And it's really quite big. I'm going to put it here. It's right at the front of my photograph. OK, so that's that front edge. Can you see now what's happening to these lines here? We know that this angle should be a right angle. But when you perceive it, when you see it with your eyes, it's starting to disappear away. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to join up very lightly with one of my construction lines to that point over there. Now, if we were doing a technical drawing, you'd be using a ruler. For this, I can just do it like that. If you will need to use a ruler very lightly, you can put in those construction lines. Can you see now that looks more like the edge of my cube? I'm going to put in that back vertical there. It's parallel to that front line because it's a vertical it's not affected by the vanishing but actually it's become shorter it seems shorter because that back corner is further away from me so now I've got one face of my cube finished when we're doing this with two points instead of one I know that that point there now also needs a construction line over to that vanishing point and then I can equally put in my other vertical over here. And that will need one back to that vanishing point. And can you see how that's given me my squashed square on the top? Okay. So I don't think drawing food, you're going to have that many boxes to draw. But the interesting thing about drawing a box, I'm going to use a different colour for a minute actually, um, is if I wanted to make this box look transparent, look see-through, I would continue to join these back corners to those lines. So I would get a back corner that would fit in something like that. There you go. Now I'm a bit more sure I've got it in the right place. I'm going to go in a bit. So can you see that that looks more like a transparent box? 
Okay, so now imagine that I wanted to draw, um, let's say, a burger. It's a very tall burger. It'll be fine. I know that where my burger would touch the floor, it would have a circular base. And I can see that if this was going to be a circle, it would hit the middle there, and the middle there, and the middle there, and the middle there. It's going to be a squircle again, isn't it? It's going to be quite squashed. I know it would come out more like that because it's going to be elliptical. I'm going to have to put in the base of where that would go. Okay, so it has to fit inside the box. Then maybe about this far up on my cube, maybe my burger is going to be that deep. Okay, so I'm going to draw that circle again, but slightly higher. Again, these are just my construction lines. Can you see I've decided the burger bun is a bit like a cylinder? Remember, you'll have your photograph to look at. So if I started to sketch that in, I'd give it a more curved edge and a more natural looking thing. And actually on this line here, I'm going to have a little bit of lettuce poking out and some ketchup. You'll be able to see all these things and then another cylinder on top similar line fitting it inside my box and remembering those elliptical circles that's where my sort of actual meaty burger would be and i have to work on my texture there i think still just in construction stage now though and then to get that domed bun on the top it's a little bit like the sphere isn't it it's um it doesn't have those cylindrical corners so it won't appear massively different what will help is when i have to do my shading because my shading should be a little bit like those segments again and i should be able to see them get darker and darker as they get away from the light okay so that is not the neatest most beautiful burger but i hope you can see that it almost looks like it's fitted inside that transparent box you can start to adapt those shapes to help you make other ones. Also, the burger was in a regular shape. We made it up from a bit of a sphere, a bit of a cylinder. Something like this stone would be in a regular shape. It looks one way from the top and it changes shape when I look at it from different angles. But at the same time, unlike the circles and the squares I was seeing before, it's harder for me to see that squashing effect because the shape is irregular. I didn't know, my brain doesn't know exactly what it should look like anyway. Um, so if you're drawing something like the banana, you might need to make that up from several shapes and think, well, how are they behaving? Um, so you might think, oh, I've got a banana coming along here. There's my table. It's almost in line with that table there. So I could pretend that that's a little box disappearing off that way. That's the middle chunk of my banana. And then I'm going to pretend that it's got a sort of curvy bit up here. Can I make that a bit like a bit of a sphere or a cylinder even? Give it a join like that and make sure. And the same over here, maybe it's a bit like a cylinder but it joins onto the box. And then on the end here, it's got another little cylinder which is the stalk. Okay, so that's a very rough sketch. Then I would go back in and put in my more definite lines, joining those together. Right, okay, so again, that's not the most perfect banana, but remember, these sides here are round, and when you shade them, they need to have those curved lines to show the fullness, the roundness of a shape. A flat shape you would shade with straight lines, curve shape keep that curve going so that you can see what's going on i'm not getting to finish any of these drawings for you just i just want to try and get some impressions okay so you can see the other thing that's slightly strange is i've left it very flat but sometimes things look very flat when they're on the table remember to have a look and see if there's a shadow you need to put in so say if my light was coming in this direction there may be quite a strong shadow here and that will also help make your objects look more real. Don't put them in if they're not there. Use your photograph to inform 
your drawing. Observation is going to be the key. Okay, so the last thing I want to just think about is when we've got a set up with lots of different objects and I've taken a photograph of um, that sort of idea. So these two balls are obviously very different sizes when you look at them from above, when you look at them from the side. But when you take a photograph, I'm trying to get that like that, the ping pong ball is an awful lot closer and the other ball looks a lot smaller because it's further away even though we know it's much much bigger but also you can't see all of the other ball this ping pong ball has come in front of it when you're setting up a still life with a lot of objects you will notice that they cover each other up and that is a great way of showing depth in your picture so let's say for example I'd got an orange here. I'm just doing that very light construction line first. I'm going to think that it's maybe got that little starry bit on the top and then I'm going to think just these are my construction lines about putting those curves in to show how bulgy and round my orange is. And I won't see those lines in my final drawing but I will see that I've used those to zone where I shade so this might end up a little bit darker and this even darker still because it's tucked underneath so there's my orange it's not finished but it's in my drawing um, and then maybe there's an apple behind it so again this may need to be a little bit smaller because it's tucked behind it and although I know my apple is about here it's going away on that perspective line again getting slightly smaller I know that I'm only going to see this section of the apple popping out from behind. I'm going to put in a sort of the top of it. I notice that my apple gets a little bit flatter there. So although you're using perfect circles, you will need to adjust your construction lines. And it will have a very similar construction to the orange. It's just a little further back. So I know that, again, my shading will be lighter up here where it's facing the light and much darker down here. Particularly, the reason it will stand out is when this bit of the apple here is dark, this bit of the orange will be lighter. And you should end up with a really nice line between the two where you can see that they overlap. Again, a little shadow. And shadows quite often are nice with straight lines. Have a look in your photograph. Where did the light come? Where did the shadows fall? Um, we've suggested, I think, in some of my pictures, I've used a piece of coloured paper that my objects are sat on. That's really nice as well, because if you can't get the whole table in, it gives you some way of placing them in a space like that. OK, so you can you see, but by doing that squashed square base, I know this is a square, but when I look at it, and I perceive it from the side, I can see that it disappears off like that. OK, um, you could put in your more challenging banana behind over here or even um, a bunch of grapes. Maybe they're tumbling over the edge, starting off just with the basic outline shapes. And then I need to remember that some of them will be tucked behind. Where can I see them popping up? And again, they will have very similar that segmenty shape darker towards the bottom and where they overlap even within the bunch of grapes you will not see round circles next to each other like that some of them you'll only see a little bit popping up behind the one behind and actually as you get further away from where you've taken your photograph they will tuck more and more behind that's very one one really good way of getting them to look um, like they are in their place in your picture. Okay, um, you can imagine I had a cylinder or something else behind there. That might, maybe it's a can of drink or a glass that would fit in. I would never get to see what it was standing on, but because I put this in, that makes it quite nice and clear. Okay, so I've given you an awful lot of information. I haven't gone into the shading. I know you've done shading skills before about how to get dark and light tones 
you really really need to pay attention I know this ball is orange all over but when I look at it in black and white some areas it will be darker than others it's probably actually a little bit tricky to see let me turn off one of my lights because when I film I deliberately film um, with lights all around so now I've taken that off can you see it's light on this side and it gets to a much darker orange on that side if you're using black and white pencil you know that here you want to be shading very light and can you see how this segment over here is looking a lot darker that's actually quite a nice image to show you the different tones in the different sections of that ball okay so there's lots of ideas there for you to use you do have the photograph to guide you i hope that helps have fun